Thank you for choosing to watch this video. My name is Lydia and I am a fertility awareness educator. So I have a certification in a fertility awareness method called FEM where I have learned how to track ovulation with basal body temperature tracking, cervical fluid observations, and LH testing. In this video, I'm going to be talking about natural cycles. You've probably heard of it or seen it, especially influencers. A lot of influencers have been promoting it and I want to talk to you about some of my concerns with using this as a birth control method. Let's get into this video. Now first let's talk about natural cycles. If you don't already know what it is, natural cycles is a natural birth control which doesn't involve any hormonal use, it's non-invasive. It's essentially just using a thermometer and an app to track your cycle. The app's algorithm analyzes the data from your temperature each day, and it's analyzing whether or not each day is a fertile day or not a fertile day. Now, they have done some research themselves on like how efficient their method is. You can go to their website and find all this information. According to their website, their effectiveness is 93% with typical use and 98% with perfect use. So that is just some information to give you a background on what exactly this is. You're basically just taking your temperature each day, the app is analyzing it, and it's telling you if you're safe today or not. So it's really, really simple, and you can see why it would be so appealing. Now before I go into too much depth about the pros and the cons of natural cycles and why I am not a huge fan of it, let's first talk about your cycle because you first need to have a good understanding of how taking your temperature can even help you understand where you're at in your cycle. If you are not on hormonal birth control and you are having healthy cycles, then you should be ovulating every single month. It might not be the same time each month, but ovulation should be happening every single month. Ovulation is when our dominant follicle releases an egg, which is then able to be fertilized during the next 24 hours. It doesn't survive very long. And then after those 24 hours are up, it is no longer able to be fertilized. It has dissolved, it is gone. After that point, you are not fertile again until the next month. Because of this, we are able to use non-hormonal options to know whether or not we are fertile. The reason that basal body temperature is able to be used as a tool to know if ovulation is happening or has happened is our basal body temperature, our resting temperature, is going to increase after ovulation has happened. This is due to progesterone. Progesterone is starting to be produced after ovulation happens, it's only produced after ovulation happens because a whole tissue develops from what was the follicle that had released the egg that then changes into the corpus luteum. And this tissue is what produces progesterone and progesterone being produced is what causes our basal body temperature to increase. So during that second half of our cycle, after ovulation has happened, our basal body temperature is going to be increased. For someone who is tracking their basal body temperature every single day, cycle after cycle, you're going to see that pattern of lower temperatures and then after ovulation happens, they're going to be increased temperatures. I will show you a couple of my charts for an example of what this looks like. Now, one of the most important things to know about tracking your cycle using basal body temperatures is the fact that it's very helpful to help you know that you have ovulated because that temperature rises and this is what is telling you that you have in fact ovulated so you are no longer fertile. The problem with methods that only use basal body temperature is that you don't have a way of predicting when ovulation is going to happen. Now, of course, you always do have the people who ovulate very, very regularly. And maybe even despite stressful situations or whatever you might be going through, you might ovulate on the 14th day of your cycle, every single cycle, for instance. That consistency is going to help a method like this work well for you. But we aren't textbooks and things happen. Even with just a normal healthy cycle, there's going to be fluctuations 
as far as when ovulation is happening. So it's not going to be happening the same day every single cycle, and we can't predict that with just basal body temperature. Our basal body temperature is not telling us anything before ovulation happens. It's only telling us that ovulation has not yet been confirmed. Your temperature doesn't necessarily rise until after ovulation has already happened. Now there are other methods that can be used when you are trying to take a non-hormonal birth control approach that is going to help cover all of the bases. Again, basal body temperature is really, really good with confirming ovulation, but then there's things like cervical fluid. So observing your cervical fluid patterns are telling you what is happening that day because your cervical fluid changes based on what hormones are being produced that day. For instance, if estrogen is high, then it's going to be producing a certain type of cervical fluid, which is going to be present before ovulation or during ovulation when you are fertile. So that's a really great tool to be used, especially before ovulation has been confirmed, to know when you are entering your fertile window and if ovulation is gonna be happening soon. There's also other things that you can do, such as LH testing, which can help you kind of pinpoint a narrower window of when ovulation is happening. This is especially useful for people who are trying to get pregnant and trying to know kind of within a 24 hour window when ovulation is happening. So that is all for kind of a quick snapshot into how these different non-hormonal birth control methods work. Let's move into talking about kind of the benefits and the downsides of natural cycles and then I'm going to share with you my opinion of natural cycles. When it comes to the benefits of natural cycles. It is a non-hormonal birth control option, which is great. That's a great benefit. It's also non-invasive. There are some non-hormonal birth control options, such as a copper IUD, which, yeah, it's not hormonal, but it is still invasive and still is something that some people just don't want to be using. The third benefit is that it is really simple. There's not a million things that you're tracking. You're just taking your temperature every day. That's a great benefit for some people who just get overwhelmed at the idea of like tracking a bunch of different things, having these, all of these papers and charts, like that can be overwhelming. And then the fourth benefit is kind of similar to the third one, and that is that it is really easy. Again, all you're doing is taking your temperature. You're either wearing a wearable thermometer throughout the night, or you are taking your temperature first thing in the morning before you get out of bed, and that's all you're doing. Then the app is doing all the rest of the work for you. It's analyzing the data, and it's just telling you if you are fertile or not today. It makes it really easy for anyone you don't have to understand the science to be able to use this. The first downside would be that your body is not always predictable. Remember what I talked about with ovulation not always happening at the same time and how basal body temperature doesn't tell you anything until ovulation has happened. It can tell you that ovulation has been confirmed, but it can't tell you if you are in your fertile window because we do have a fertile window that opens up about five days before ovulation where our body is producing a cervical fluid that is fertile and that is able to feed sperm and keep them alive for up to five days. So even though ovulation is not happening at that time, because that cervical fluid is there, sperm are able to live longer and therefore we could get pregnant if you had intercourse that day. Basal body temperature is not telling you this and an algorithm itself can't necessarily tell you this, especially if you don't have super predictable cycles. The second downside, which I kind of already talked about, is that basal body temperature is not good at predicting ovulation. One could argue it just can't predict ovulation. It just can't do that much. It's a great tool, but to be used on its own would make me really nervous. I would want to be using other methods to increase the efficacy. The third downside would be that it could give you false red days or false fertile days. Now this might not seem like a huge deal. You want it to be conservative, of course. Again, if you have irregular cycles, then you might experience a lot of red days where you are not safe, where intercourse would be risky, and you might only have a few green days where you would be considered safe. In order to have a high efficacy, they're gonna have to be very conservative 
and using their algorithm, they're gonna have to really expand the amount of red days that they're giving you to make sure there's a very, very low chance of you getting pregnant. On one hand, that's good. On another hand, that's taken away from days that would actually be considered safe for you but again, because this method isn't giving you enough information, you're not able to confirm whether or not those days are safe. And so it's just fully taking it away. This can be a really big deal for some people. And what the app might tell you is to use another method that day, such as a barrier method. And the problem with that is that as soon as you are using another method, like a barrier method, the efficacy goes down to you know, whatever that method is. And with barrier methods, it just tends to be lower. So in order to have the actual efficacy that they're talking about, the 93% efficacy with a typical use or the 98% with perfect use, you would have to be fully abstaining on those red days. And for a lot of people, that just might not be worth it to you. But again, you know, having more red days than green days might not be a big deal. However, the fourth concern for me and the fourth downside would be that it could give you false green days. Now this is of course a bigger deal than the false red days because it's telling you you're safe when in fact you are not. Once again, with you now understanding how basal body temperature methods work, you can understand that with it just being an algorithm, there would be the chance of it giving you a green day when it's actually not a safe day and you're actually fertile. For instance, if you typically are ovulating on cycle day 14, but then one cycle you all of a sudden ovulate on cycle day nine, then on cycle day four, you could be entering your fertile window and the algorithm may not catch that. There is that possibility, especially with really irregular cycles that you could have false green days, which would increase the chance of you getting pregnant. Now that we've talked about the benefits and the downsides of natural cycles, I just want to talk to you openly about my opinion about natural cycles. As you can probably tell, I am not a fan of it. There are things that I appreciate about it. I appreciate how accessible it is making this fertility awareness tool. Everyone is hearing about it. Everyone is seeing about it. I think that the more options we as women have when it comes to especially non-hormonal birth control options, I think that is always a good thing. And I love that they are doing more research on their method. That is something that I think we're a little behind with. I think we need to have more research, more up-to-date research on these non-hormonal options, which do show, you know, good rates of efficacy, but we just need more research to make sure we're fully understanding each of these methods. And every method is going to be a little bit different, so the efficacy rates might be slightly different. So I'm glad to see that they are doing a lot of research as well. I think, again, research in women's health, always a good thing, always something that we just don't have enough of. So those are things I really appreciate about it. And I do think this is a great stepping stone for someone who wants to get into learning more about their cycles, but might be overwhelmed with all of the things. Like again, it's really simple to just take your temperature. However, I wouldn't want you to stop there. I want you to learn more about your body. I don't want you just kind of having an app tell you what may or may not be going on in your body because it's telling you, but it doesn't necessarily know. So that's where methods like the FEM method really thrive because you're using all of these different like data points to help you understand where your body is currently, what your body is doing today, if you're in your fertile window, if you're past your fertile window. And it can also help you to track the health of your cycles. It can help you catch different underlying problems. So knowing more about your body is always a good thing. So that's one thing I, I would encourage you, like if you want to try it, to try it, but add other methods like cervical fluid observations and don't go based off of what the app is telling you. Like you can use it as a way to organize your data and to keep track of your temperature, but don't just do whatever it tells you based off of a red day or green day. You want to back that up with cervical fluid observations, maybe LH testing to help just give you more data so that instead of algorithm based decisions, you're making decisions based off of what your body is actually doing. So my conclusion is if you want to try natural cycles, you can try it, but know the risks of it. 
know the limitations of this method and look into widening your scope of what you're doing, what you're tracking. Once you start tracking your base body temperature, start learning how to observe your cervical fluid observations. And that is a really, really great way that's gonna help you know if you are entering your fertile window or not. I make videos on this all the time, so you can look back in all of my videos and you can learn this as well. And I have an inexpensive course that helps you to learn specifically how to track ovulation. And I talk about basal body temperature, I talk about cervical fluid, and LH testing so you can get information on all of those things and really increase your confidence. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was helpful and I would love to hear from you if it was helpful and if you have used natural cycles or want to use natural cycles, I would love to hear your opinion and your experience on that. Thanks again. Bye.